uh, please welcome Carrie Whitehead on stage. How are you guys doing? You guys are like, oh, it's beer 30. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, well, I would go Tony Robbins on you guys when I'm not that good. Um, this is why they put a woman in developer session. We're going to talk shopping. <laughs> and you know, we've heard a lot in design and development today, but we're, I'm all about fashion and shopping. So let's talk about that. Uh, show of hands, how many of you guys have actually had to go out, buy something online, get completely overwhelmed or frustrated, and just back out? A lot of you guys, right? Um, I trust you weren't on Zappos.com when that happened. And if so, talk to me after. We'll figure it out. Um, but I was talking to a woman at the end of last year, and uh, she was saying that she was getting married, and she needed to buy a dress for her engagement party. She didn't have a specific style or anything in mind. She just knew she wanted a dress that was unique, that felt good on her. And uh, so she started going online. She went to Bloomingdale's. She goes to uh, Navigates to Dresses, and uh, she sees 3,000 dresses. Uh, then she goes to Zappos, and again, 3,000 dresses. Uh, had she gone to Amazon, that would be 100,000 dresses. And I can make fun of Amazon, because I work for Amazon, too. Um, she was very overwhelmed by the experience. She was running out of time. So she ends up uh, basically just going into the nearest department store, finding a dress that she, uh, you know, she liked. But overall, the whole experience wasn't really that amazing. And uh, so as I was uh, listening and as we were talking about it at Zappos Labs, we were thinking, you know, why can't we create something to help with this problem? And uh, I will uh, talk a second about Zappos Labs and why I'm telling you this story. So what we do at Zappos Labs, we're a small team in San Francisco, um, and we really focus on creating experiments in retail. So the idea is that you know, we experiment a lot, we learn quickly, and we share those insights with Zappos.com to ultimately future, uh, inspire the future of Zappos. And then obviously, when we can, try to share with others like you all today. Um, and, so, um, and so we've actually had the chance to, uh, ex to learn a lot over the last couple of years. And, specifically because we have failed a lot. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys today is um, share a little bit about what we've learned uh, over time and share that through sort of a case study of a particular product called Glance that we recently launched. And, um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about sort of um, simple design and, and mobile UI, but I also will sort of talk about the whole process and how we got there. So I'm going to call that woman I told you the story about Kate. So going back to Kate's problem, um, she was completely overwhelmed with the experience. So we thought, what if our stylist could actually pick out you know, what we thought was best for Kate? And Kate could you know, discover that. And then
to our list of beta testers. And how we have a list of beta testers, if you go onto the labs, the Zappos Labs website, uh, you can sign up to be a, a beta tester. Um, and so we have them to reach out to whenever we want to just sort of bounce ideas. Um, we also internally went to Zappos employees and we had them look at some early wireframes and mocks. Uh, and then we also did a friends and family type study. So um, all of us at labs reached out to our friends and family. We asked them, do you have 30 minutes, an hour to come in, take a look at some of these um, wireframes and, and give us some feedback? And if they couldn't come in, we all had a, like, sort of a script that we could follow so we could take that out and we could talk to them. And so we knew after we had done that, um, it was a good idea. We knew that the idea was solid, but we also knew that it was a big idea. We were talking curation, we were talking discovery, we were, um, you know, we were talking community. I mean, this could have been a beast, right? Um, so we also knew that when we talked to customers early on, uh, that, that they were very adamant about it had to be easy and simple. And so that was a huge theme that came through. Keep it simple. And simple doesn't mean boring. It still has to be meaningful, engaging, useful. Simple just means not complex. And so, um, you know, the thing was with when you come up with a new experience like this, and whenever we launch a product at Glance, I'm sorry, at Zappos Labs, it, it's generally a new experience, that your customers are coming there and they're going to be casual users at first. They may not even be invested in your brand. They may not care about your product. They're ready to back out as soon as they get there. So you have to make it super quick for them to understand what it is and get them started. Um, not just that, but you have to understand where they are in the context of their use. So, you know, are they sort of on their phone on the train? Are they, uh, you know, in a, in a really loud environment? Are they in a really quiet environment? How many of us have, like, opened up a browser while you're sitting in a super silent room and, like, a video starts playing? Like, that happens to me, and it's, like, so embarrassing. So um, really trying to understand that uh, so that, that you have that great first experience regardless of, of how you're accessing it. So with Glance, um, you know, we had a ton of ideas. We had a laundry list of things that we thought Kate's going to love. Um, but we also knew it had to be very simple. And we knew that we wanted the product to be king. We knew it was all about, you know, Jared talks a lot about the content this morning. We knew for us it was about the product. And so we didn't want anything to get in the way of the products themselves. And, uh, and so it was a lot of conversations early on as a team about, um, you know, is this really necessary for Kate when we launch? Uh, is this something that's going to be a differentiator? And it was a constant sort of question to ourselves is, what can we take away? It's always easy to add, but what can we take away? And it was really on each of us, and it was the whole team. I mean, it was a small core team, but it was on each of us uh, to really put that question out there when somebody had an idea. Um, and, and that wasn't just features. I mean, we had, you know, ideas. We wanted search. We wanted a traditional navigation. We wanted, um, you know, to be able to follow people and all, you know, all that stuff that we, we thought we don't need all of that at launch um, because it's about the product and it's about the collection and the curation of the products. So it was also in the visual design as well. As we were going through the whole interaction and visual design process, it was about is that necessary? Do we really need to have that there? Do we need a hairline? What's the hairline for? You know, does that need to be a gradient? Like it was always all of us together sort of forcing ourselves to ask that question. And, um, and so we really, you know, we really went through this process of sort of trying to take stuff away throughout. So in addition, we knew Kate was going to be accessing this sort of in the morning on her commute, on her phone. We also knew we were going to go out with emails, with like a daily digest. So we knew she was going to be accessing this from her phone. We also knew she was going to be accessing this at lunchtime on her laptop, and then probably in the evenings, and maybe on the weekends, probably maybe with an iPad. So we wanted Glance to respond gracefully in all those situations. Um, no matter where sort of she was a uh, accessing it, it, it was a great experience for her. So again, that was, that was sort of a situation where if we didn't have the right team in place, I don't think we would have been as successful. It was a very collaborative team where, um, you know, the design and the developer and the product, you know, literally were all sitting right next to each other uh, physically. And, uh, and being able to, um, you know, be, all of us be so part of kind of creating that vision of Glance at the beginning, all the way from like what features to what design elements, 
really allowed us all to have a shared vision of what Glance was and what it was going to become, which allowed each person on the team to be, um, to be able to feel empowered to sort of make decisions in a more informed way. So it wasn't always this kind of up the chain to the product person and, you know, it, it, like especially when it came to the, uh, the responsiveness, we were able to, um, you know, design and development, just sort of hacking it out. Like, do we really need, um, you know, the, the description uh, of, of each collection when she's in a collection on mobile? It's really about the product. Let's get her to the product. The description takes up too much of the screen. Um, so where are the breakpoints? You know, what happens to a, an icon versus does it become a link? So it was a lot of those types of conversations, and they were just sort of happening on the fly as we were, as we were designing it. So although we went out with sort of a priority order, um, we never... We, we always thought about what it would be like on, on all of these platforms. So we wanted to get Glance out there. We had an idea. We wanted to get it out there. We had built it um, and, and really start to quickly get feedback. So you know, this is something you probably all day we've been talking about. But there's so many tools out there to do this. There's no reason not to. So even adding feedback mechanisms into your product, like that's a no-brainer. Like That's an easy way to immediately get feedback from customers. Lots of tools to do online usability. Um, Google surveys let you go out there and, and, and do a quantitative very easily. Um, get out there and start gathering the data. Measure it. Don't be paralyzed by the data. We picked one or two things that we wanted to track, and that's all we tracked. Um, but sort of listening, especially this morning to JP's um, kind of ending with the large thumbnail, uh, you need the data, but don't forget about your customers, talking to your customers. Those have to balance. So when we launched Glance, we actually launched with what you see on the left. It was bright blue header. We launched with uh, our, what we call the hero image. The images representing the collections were kind of bright, different colored backgrounds. Uh, our product mix, we had couture, we had men's, we had um, outdoor. Uh, so we, we sort of just went out there with what we thought, and we, we immediately started getting feedback from customers. That was through usability, that was through the feedback built in on the site. Um, we found we needed to do some feature changes. Uh, we needed to add some features to it. We knew that from a layout perspective, um, there were some things we wanted to do in terms of um, promoting the different collections. We also knew customers thought that that bright blue um, didn't feel stylish enough. It wasn't sophisticated enough for a fashion site. So we knew we wanted to do sort of a, re, a refresh of, of the look and feel. Um, but we also knew that that refresh of the look and feel was going to take a little bit longer than um, some of these other things that we could iterate on really quickly. So what you're seeing here is sort of an evolution of iterations um, that we did. That one in the middle was actually, um, you can't see it in the screenshot, but we actually removed a number of collections that we were showing um, and immediately saw our performance go down. And so literally that next day, we added in all those collections back. So you know, being able to respond that quickly. Um, and then sort of doing this iterative uh, approach also allowed us to really track the difference between is it the layout that's, that's causing this or is it the, the visuals that's causing this. Um, so overall, Glance actually is performing very well. We actually find that with a, a Glance customer has about a f over 50% higher average order value than that of Zappos.com. Um, they're very engaged customers and overall it's, um, you know, it's performing really well. But I did also want to touch on, I said we had a lot of failures. So Glance um, is doing great, but this is an example of one of our failures. So we did a product called Social Buzz. We know people go out, they talk to their friends, families, and others before they make a purchase. So we thought, why not bring that conversation in? So into our product page, we actually brought in a Twitter feed. So if they were mentioning uh, the product and Zappos on Twitter, we brought that into the product page. So that conversation could be there when you're looking at the product. You could also tweet a question from the product page. What we found is of the people who did actually see it and click on it, they performed really well. But uh, just having it there actually brought the whole group down. So that's an example of sort of we added an element to the page, it added complexity to the page. So we ended up rolling that back and we're sort of iterating on that now. So just to kind of sum it all up, again, really understanding the customers, uh, making sure you're solving for a real problem, keeping it uh, simple but also accessible, and uh, get it out there and start learning. Embrace your failures, see them as opportunities. Thank you.